everyone, my name is Amanda and I am with Eat Pray Crunch here on YouTube. Today I am so excited to be doing a collaboration with another amazing crunchy mama here on YouTube and her name is also Amanda and her channel is called Mama Sana and I'll have her channel linked here in the cards and in the description down below. Um, but if you guys haven't found her channel yet, be sure to definitely go check it out and subscribe to her channel. She is just the sweetest girl and definitely we are very much on the same wavelength in terms of crunchy lifestyle and mothering and that kind of thing. So if you guys like my channel, you will most definitely love her channel as well. So I'm assuming that if you guys are also crunchy or moderately crunchy like myself, you are very familiar with Mama Natural here on YouTube. Mama Natural is probably the main inspiration for me for starting a YouTube channel in the first place. She was one of the first YouTubers that I ever watched even before I even thought about having my own YouTube channel way back when I was pregnant with my son five years ago. So she has definitely been an amazing influence in terms of my parenting decisions, lifestyle decisions, that kind of thing. She's just a wealth of information. And if you guys follow Mama Natural, you are probably already aware that she just came out with this book called The Mama Natural Week by Week Guide to Pregnancy and Childbirth. This is a what to expect when you're expecting type book, but with a natural perspective. So everything in here is if you are looking to do things a little bit more of the natural way. I pre-ordered this book a long time, like when she first made the announcement that it was a book that you could pre-order, I went onto Amazon and I pre-ordered it because I was so excited. And as you guys know, I am currently pregnant. I am 17 weeks pregnant this week, and I am just so thrilled that this came out during my pregnancy so that I can reference this throughout my pregnancy. And I have to tell you, I wish that I had had this book when I was pregnant the first time, you guys. This type of book is something that is unprecedented. There really hasn't been any sort of pregnancy book that has everything in there that you need to know about everything pregnancy related before, during, and after pregnancy from a natural perspective. So I am thrilled that this book is out and I am all about spreading the word about this book because I think that it is such an important resource that every pregnant mama should have. So as part of this collaboration that us Amandas are doing <laughs> is we are giving two copies of this book away because we just really want to share this amazing book with you guys, our viewers, because we are just so genuinely on board with the information in this book. So as part of this giveaway today, I am going to be talking about five tips for how to have a healthy, natural pregnancy. And Amanda is going to be talking about tips for a healthy, natural childbirth. So to enter this giveaway, what you guys have to do is obviously watch both of our videos and leave a comment and like it. And we will have a link in the description down below that you can follow to enter this giveaway. And there are actually ways that you can get multiple entries. So be sure to check out that link so you know all of the ways that you can get as many entries as possible, which increases your chance of winning. So without further ado, let's get into my five tips for how to have a healthy, natural pregnancy. Tip number one, good nutrition. Now, this might be something that seems like Captain Obvious here, but the, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is. So my husband and I actually struggled with infertility when we were first trying to get pregnant. And ultimately, to make a long story short, we switched from a conventional American diet to more of a real food kind of diet. Basically, in a nutshell, eating the way our ancestors ate before the advent of processed food. So basically a lot of real foods and a good balance between animal foods and plant foods. So long story short, when we switched to that kind of diet, it completely 
reversed our infertility problem. And I have that whole story here, so if you guys are interested in watching our infertility story and how we went about healing our infertility, I'll have that playlist linked right here. So it goes without saying that on a really practical level, nutrition has completely changed our lives. So not only did it help us to get pregnant in the first place, continuing to eat that way really helped me to continue having a really strong, healthy pregnancy. So I have actually in the past already made a whole video of seven principles of a real natural foods diet and I will link that video here if you want to know the different elements of nutrition and why they are so important. And those exact elements are 100% relevant to how you eat during pregnancy. Because literally what you are putting in your body is what your baby becomes. And so it is so important for us to be putting good foods in our body when we are growing little humans. So in addition to eating lots of healthy, fresh, real food, it is also important to have really good natural supplements. And I actually have my natural supplements that I am taking here with me right now so I can show you. No matter who you are, <laughs> crunchy or conventional, everyone agrees that it is so important to take a prenatal vitamin just to fill in the gaps of whatever may be lacking in your diet, but prenatal vitamins are not all made equal. From a more natural perspective, the kind of prenatal vitamin that you want to look for is either a food-based prenatal vitamin or a vitamin that is formulated specifically to be highly absorbable and bioavailable to your body. So it's not just vitamins being flushed through your body, but that your body is actually absorbing them and that they are getting to your baby because that is critical. So the prenatal vitamin that I have used for all three of my pregnancies is the Thorn Basic Prenatal. I'll show you guys here. And I have absolutely loved this prenatal. Um, this is the one that my midwives have recommended all the way along. This one has also been recommended by my acupuncturist, um, who he's a fertility acupuncturist, and this is the one that he recommends. So I know that if, you know, acupuncturists and midwives are recommending this prenatal, it's really good natural choice. And because the nutrients are so bioavailable in this one, it's actually really easy on your stomach too. I'll actually have an Amazon link for this prenatal in the description if you're interested in getting this prenatal. The other second most important thing behind a prenatal to supplement with is a pure fish oil of some kind. I prefer to use cod liver oil. According to the Weston A. Price Foundation, cod liver oil is a supplement that all of us living in a modern society should be taking because the nutrients that are in it are nutrients that are really lacking in a modern day diet. I've heard a lot of people recommending getting the blue ice fermented cod liver oil because supposedly that's even more bioavailable, but it's just so darn expensive. And for those of us who are also interested in living a frugal life, it's really important for me to find a balance of good nutrition and affordability. So I have been really happy with this Carlson's cod liver oil. And this one comes in capsules. And I had been taking like an actual spoonful of cod liver oil because you can get it that way and it's even more affordable. But being pregnant and the nausea of early pregnancy and whatnot, I just wanted to have a capsule that I could take so that I didn't have to taste it as much. The fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K, and the omega-3 fatty acids that are in fish oil, especially cod liver oil, those particular nutrients are so, so vital for brain development of baby during pregnancy. And I will also have this one linked below. I've talked about this in my pregnancy updates, but I take this magnesium supplement called Natural Calm. And it is just a powder. I put a scoop of this into warm water every night before I go to bed. And something that a lot of people don't recognize is that in our culture, we are very magnesium deficient. And this is something that can really help keep your magnesium levels up. I've heard people talk about how when they supplement with magnesium or um, get a magnesium supplement that you put directly on your skin because you can actually absorb it most effectively through your skin, it has actually significantly reduced 
um, a lot of the difficult symptoms in the first trimester like nausea. And it's also really helpful for when you have pregnancy insomnia because it really helps you calm down and be able to fall asleep easier, hence why I take it right before I go to bed. And if you are pregnant, you also know that constipation is a real problem sometimes, and this helps keep you a little more regular. Tip number two is to either see a midwife or an OB who is very naturally minded for your prenatal care. So regardless of whether you are seeking a medicated or an unmedicated birth, having midwifery care makes all the difference in terms of holistic care throughout your pregnancy. Now, if you're more interested in having a natural labor, all midwives are very supportive of natural labor and will do everything they can to help you achieve that. So you can either have a certified midwife, which is outside of a hospital. They can either work in a freestanding birth center or do home births, or you can work with a nurse midwife who usually works in a hospital as an alternative to OB care during your pregnancy. If you are wanting the option of medication during your labor, but still want to have as few interventions as possible during labor, you can still have the most holistic, natural prenatal care with the nurse midwife, but still have that option during labor since you're in the hospital. So both of those are great options. And from the experience of what many of my friends have told me, there are a number of very naturally minded OBs out there as well who are very patient centered and willing to work with you with what you want to help you achieve the kind of pregnancy and the kind of birth that you want to achieve as well. I cannot emphasize enough, research, research, research who you want to go to for your prenatal care. And from my personal experience, I have only ever had midwives and I cannot rave enough about how amazing midwifery care is. It is like no other medical care I've ever had. It is so compassionate. It is so holistic. You never feel like a number. <laughs> you are treated like a human being with feelings and emotions and a soul. <laughs> it has always been my experience that they have gone above and beyond and taken all sorts of extra time to answer questions and address your concerns, address your emotions, um, and make you feel very supported in all of your choices. And I also really like that midwives promote making natural choices throughout your pregnancy as well in terms of the kinds of foods you eat and the kinds of supplementation that you use and in terms of what kinds of tests you want to have done and how to go about all of that. It's all from a little bit more holistic perspective. Be sure to consider the midwifery option and or seeking an OB who is very holistically minded because it makes all the difference in the kind of care that you receive throughout your pregnancy and during your birth as well. Tip number three to have a natural healthy pregnancy is to avoid exposure to things that may be unhealthy for your unborn baby. So namely avoiding things that have toxins in them. Probably one of the biggest things that you can do in terms of avoiding toxins in your food is to buy organic when possible. Now I know financially that's not always an option, but there are ways to get around that. There's a list called the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15, and those tell you which produce items specifically are most important to get organic and which ones it's a little more okay to get conventional. And there are lots of ways to get organic food at a really discounted rate. I actually have made a number of grocery hauls and videos talking about how we buy our food organic at a more affordable price. So if it is within your budget, definitely consider buying organic if you can. Other things that you can do are pretty common sense. Avoid your exposure to places where there are fumes, that kind of thing, that kind of goes without saying. Um, but some of those things you don't necessarily think about, like if you're painting your baby's nursery, you might wanna consider having your partner do it. Um, so that you're not in there breathing in all of the paint fumes while you're pregnant. And for example, you might, when you're out driving in heavy traffic, you might want to keep the air in your car circulating rather than having the air coming in so you're not getting exposed to all of the gasoline.
the things especially that are sitting on your skin and getting absorbed into your skin, like lotions and deodorants and things like that. Those are the most critical things that you want to have the more natural versions of so that you're not absorbing all those chemicals into your body, especially while you're pregnant. Another way to avoid toxic chemicals during your pregnancy is to use more natural cleaning products as well. We actually use e-cloths. I made a video about that as well. I'm realizing I've made lots of videos on these lifestyle things that we do. Um, but we use e-cloths, which are kind of like Norwex. It's just a kind of fabric that you just use water with and it actually cleans things really thoroughly, germs and all. And I use that for the vast majority of things. Um, and you can also make natural cleaners out of things like vinegar, uh, essential oils, that kind of thing. There are so many options for non-toxic cleaners, especially while you're pregnant. Those are so important. Another thing to consider for keeping your baby safe is reducing your EMF exposure. I know that Mama Natural has talked about this a fair amount on her channel. EMFs are what are emitted by all of our electronic devices around us. We have Wi-Fi, we have TVs, we have smartphones, we have tablets, we have all sorts of things that are emitting these EMFs around us all the time. And um, there are ways to reduce our exposure, and especially baby's exposure, to these during pregnancy. One thing you can do with that is to just be really conscious with how you are using your smartphone. The closer a device is to your body, the more exposure you have. If you're sitting and texting or just browsing on your phone, um, try not to hold it right next to your belly when you're pregnant and try not to carry it in your pocket right over your belly, that kind of thing. Try to carry it in your purse instead, for example. You can also just turn your cell phone off at night or turn it onto airplane mode, which turns off the Wi-Fi and cell capabilities while you're sleeping. So those are just some ways to avoid EMF exposure. And I actually just purchased a month or two ago this little blanket. And this blanket is called Belly Armor. I think this is actually an idea that I got from Mama Natural. I'll have this blanket linked below in the description if you're interested in getting one for yourself. But this is an EMF blocking blanket. And it has these two sides. And so the idea is you put this over your belly when you are you know, just browsing on your phone and you can have your phone close to your belly and it doesn't matter. Or if you have a laptop that's sitting really close to your belly. So it's a great way that you can still use your devices without worrying about baby being exposed to those EMFs. Another thing to consider in terms of EMF exposure while you're pregnant is ultrasounds. Now this is something that is pretty controversial even within the crunchy mama world is are ultrasounds safe and if so how many should you be exposed to throughout your pregnancy that kind of thing you have the furthest over crunchy side that says no ultrasounds at all whatsoever and then there's the more conventional side that says all ultrasounds are safe you can have as many as you want they're totally safe they don't harm baby i take a little bit more of a middle ground since i consider myself to be moderately crunchy and i think it is important to get at least at least one ultrasound during your pregnancy. If you have to get one ultrasound, I would say do the 20 week anatomy scan. And that's even, I was reading through Mama Natural's book, she was actually making the same recommendation that if you must get one, that is the one to do. And there are many medical reasons for that. If there is a medical condition that's going on with the baby, A, you want to know. So you can emotionally prepare for that. and B, so that your medical team can medically prepare for that as well. I've actually known a handful of people in my life who this has been the case for. When they go in for their 20 week ultrasound and it reveals that there is some major medical complication with the baby. These are the kinds of things that you don't really want to think about, but it's kind of something that we have to think about. There is that possibility, even though it's a very small possibility, the vast majority of pregnancies turn out just healthy and fine, but occasionally there is something that needs addressing. You probably want to know if there is a condition that increases your chance of things like stillbirth 
or you know if there's a very serious condition like that or if it's something that's a little less serious but will require some sort of medical intervention right at birth. Um, we actually have some friends who ha just had a baby within the last year and because of their 20 week ultrasound they discovered that there was a hole in baby's diaphragm and her stomach was up in her chest. So she had to have a very monitored birth and baby immediately had to be put in the NICU and they had to be in the hospital for a couple of months after her birth and she had to have surgery to get her stomach back down in its proper position and they wouldn't have known about that had they not done the 20 week ultrasound. So in my opinion it's really important to have that knowledge not only just for your emotional sake and knowing ahead of time but also because it can actually save your baby's life if there is a complication that needs addressing at birth or even before birth sometimes. So for me, I think it is really important to at least get that one ultrasound. But that said, I do acknowledge some of the research that has gone on about overexposure to ultrasound. It's definitely not something that you want to be doing on a regular basis. You don't necessarily want to be going into these places where you can just see your baby for fun, <laughs> where they do like the 3D ultrasounds like that, because especially the 3D ultrasound has much more powerful waves than even the 2D ultrasound. Um, so it's definitely something you want to minimize, but occasionally there are reasons to have them more frequently. In my last pregnancy, I had a hematoma, which was a huge hemorrhage or bleed, and I had to be on bed rest for two months, and I did have to go in every month for a couple of months to make sure that the hematoma was shrinking, and that was um, monitoring the safety of our baby and so you really just have to find that moderate balance in only using ultrasound when it's medically necessary. Anyway, those are all ways that you can reduce exposure to toxins and EMFs and other things that could be harmful to your baby. Tip number four is prepare, prepare, prepare for your birth. While you are pregnant, it is so important to educate yourself. A couple of ways that you can do this is to take a childbirth class. Now, if you are going the hospital route, hospitals offer childbirth classes that you can take and I highly recommend you take them. It is so important for you to understand the physiology of how birth works so you know things like you know first stage of labor, transition, second stage, and what your body does in each of those stages and so you can understand when you're in that place and so your partner can understand when you're in that place why things are happening when they happen and it's not as scary that way you feel a lot more prepared that oh this is normal this is supposed to happen Also, I highly, highly recommend educating yourself about the industry of birth. Now, this is definitely something that is really important to me, regardless of what kind of birth you have. If you want to have a medicated birth versus a natural birth, it is still so important that you understand how the industry of birth works, especially within the hospital system. And I don't, I'm not going to make blanket generalizations because I know that there are some phenomenal hospitals out there that do a really good job, um, but there are also some not so great hospitals out there. And it's really important that you know that <laughs> before you choose a hospital. Um, especially if you're going to give birth in a hospital. It's important for you to know, for example, what is their C-section rate? Because our current C-section rate in the United States is at 30%, and that is absolutely unnecessary. True medical reasons for C-sections is somewhere between 2 and 5%, not 30%. So you really want to find a hospital that is promoting as few interventions as possible. Now a documentary that I highly highly recommend you watch before choosing a place to give birth is The Business of Being Born. You guys have probably heard of this video. I purchased it way back when I was pregnant the first time and it is actually done by Ricky Lake and her friend Abby Epstein and they do this very insightful educational documentary about how birth works in most American hospitals. And um, it is really important information to know. A lot of hospitals do a lot of interventions and practices that are not necessary during birth. And in fact, a lot of interventions that are often done 
unfortunately increase the chances of having a c-section an unnecessary c-section so it's really important for you to know which interventions are legitimately medically necessary so that you can advocate for yourself. Speaking of advocacy, you might want to look into the option of getting a doula. Is somebody who can be an advocate for you throughout the process and making sure that your wishes are being met during your labor process even when you can't advocate for yourself. And likewise, it's really important to have a birth plan. Almost all midwives expect you to have a birth plan because they um, are very supportive of that. But if you are in a hospital setting, you might want to consider, you know, what is the staff's um, attitude towards birth plans? Because you want to be in a hospital that's very supportive of wanting to um, satisfy your wishes as the patient. But if you're in a hospital where you bring up the topic of birth plan and maybe they roll their eyes, <laughs> you might want to consider maybe going to a different hospital. You definitely want to be in a place that is very patient centered. And when you have that birth plan, it can just keep all those things, you know, on a piece of paper that you want for your labor. And obviously, you can't plan every little thing in labor and things often go as you don't expect and you can't always follow your birth plan but it is important for you know your birth team to know what your wishes are and putting that in a birth plan is essential to making sure that that is well communicated one thing that you need to do during your entire pregnancy is exercise, exercise, exercise. Um, you definitely want to be in good cardiovascular health because labor is like a marathon and it is intensely physical and you want your body to be in good shape and ready to efficiently push your baby out. And there are other exercises and stretches and whatnot that you can do, especially in your third trimester when you really want to start getting baby in an optimal position for birth. Um, there's a website called Spinning Babies. I will link that in the description down below. Um, but they have, they are a wealth of information of the kinds of exercises and stretches that you can do to get baby to, into an ideal head down position um, and have baby stay that way for birth. So there are lots of things that you can do during pregnancy to prepare yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually for your birth. All right, you guys, last but not least, tip number five is to moderate your natural thinking with common sense. Now, this is why the motto for my Eat, Pray, Crunch YouTube channel is moderately crunchy, lifestyle and parenting. And I emphasize that moderately because I think that it is so important to use your critical thinking skills and common sense when it comes to making any sort of lifestyle and parenting or pregnancy decisions. Because I'd say that the vast majority of the time I choose the more natural route for things. But occasionally because I am using my critical thinking and common sense, I come to the conclusion that doing certain things the more conventional way is important to do sometimes. So I think that that is really important. I think it's really easy to get carried away on the crunchy bandwagon sometimes and just believe anything and everything that you see on the internet, for example. Um, and that can be a dangerous thing as well, and that can be dangerous during your pregnancy as well, because you don't necessarily want to believe everything that you read or see on the internet, right? <laughs> and it's really important to know that where your sources of information are coming from are legitimate sources and well-studied sources. There's a lot of research behind them, um, and it's important to not just do something crunchy just because it's labeled as such, if you know what I mean. Um, so just use your head and definitely make smart decisions when it comes, especially when it comes to your pregnancy and in terms of your prenatal care and your birth choices, that kind of thing. And know that it is okay and sometimes better to do things the conventional way sometimes. And regardless of the choices that us mamas make regarding pregnancy and childbirth, that kind of thing. It is so important 
for us to have a non-judgmental, supportive culture for each other. Everybody makes the decisions they make for a reason, and it is so important that we be loving and caring of everybody's pregnancy choices. So that is it for my five tips for a healthy, natural pregnancy. So like I said, if you haven't gone over to check out Amanda's channel over at Mama Sana, be sure to check her out. She just has amazing content. She is just a font of really good knowledge. Be sure to watch her counterpart video talking about tips for a healthy, natural birth. And remember that she and I are doing a giveaway of Mama Natural's new book. So if you are interested in entering for this giveaway, be sure to follow that link in the description below. You know, I was talking about make sure you have really good legitimate sources of information during your pregnancy. This is it. This is like the natural pregnancy resource Bible. This thing is amazing, you guys. So be sure to enter for that giveaway and we will look forward to announcing who the two winners are. And if you are here from Amanda's channel, thank you so much for coming over here. Welcome. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you found it helpful and want to see more upcoming videos like this. So thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.